Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Yeti 27 liter Crossroads backpack. And Yeti is well known for making some really high quality products such as their insulated water bottles and coolers. So I was excited to see them bring that same level of craftsmanship and ingenuity to a backpack. The Crossroads 27 liter seemed to offer a really impressive mix of features and a solid build quality. So I was excited to have a chance to test it out over the past couple of weeks. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about my experience using it. I'll show you how I've loaded it out, walk through all the features, and I'll also talk about how it compares to some of the other similar bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, I want to thank the company for sending the bag for me to test out. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the outside of the bag, this definitely has a pretty rugged and outdoorsy appearance, which I think makes sense for Yeti's brand. There's straps and attachment points and handles, so it's got a pretty functional vibe that's gonna be right at home in the outdoors, but it's not so overwhelmingly technical that it's gonna be out of place walking around the city, traveling, or even taking it into an office. As far as the colors, the version that I have here is the Alpine Brown, which feels like it has almost a little bit of an orange tint to it. Regardless, I think it looks great in this color and Yeti also offers the bag in a blue, red, and standard black color. Moving into the materials, on the exterior, the bag is made out of a 700D nylon, which is called Tough Skin. It's based off motorcycle gear and it feels very rugged in my testing. It uh, feels like it's gonna hold up well to rougher usage. It also is coated with DWR, so it's gonna keep your stuff protected from the elements. And then you also have some great YKK zippers all throughout. Continuing along the outside of the bag, on the front you have the Yeti logo, which is the same color as the bag, so it kind of blends in there nicely. You have a handle at the bottom and on the sides of the bag. So you have one up top, one on each side and then this one here on the front which is going to be great when you toss this into the back of a truck or maybe an overhead storage compartment you can kind of pull it out always nice to have this sort of handle that's easy to reach and then you have the ones on the side so if you want to carry this like a briefcase particularly when you're traveling you can kind of hold it that way regardless of how you like to carry the bag this is also going to be helpful for getting it into an overhead storage compartment and then on the front you also have some included straps which is a nice accessory for holding items that are a little bit larger that aren't gonna fit in the inside of the bag. So this would be great for holding something like a yoga mat, a jacket, maybe even a skateboard. I like that they have these clips which make them very easy to use and you can fully remove these if you prefer to maintain a cleaner exterior with the bag. One thing that I noticed when I have these straps on is that it can be a little bit cumbersome to get into the main compartment as they kind of come over the zipper. So you have to release them or loosen them, especially with the water bottle implementation that Yeti has gone with here. I'll talk about that in a second. These straps can just make it a little bit harder to get to what you need to quickly. Uh, so a little nitpick there, but I still like that they were included. And again, you can remove them if you don't want to use them. Speaking of water bottle pockets, the setup here is pretty interesting. There's not traditional external water bottle pockets, which to me is still kind of the nicest way to have water bottles easily accessible. What they did was they integrated the water bottle pockets into the main compartment. They have their Rambler pockets, which are meant to house their 18 and 26 ounce Ramblers, I believe. And so they have a zipper that goes down from the bottom and it slides up and then you have easy access to an area of the main compartment that's segmented specifically for the water bottle. So you can still sort of reach it without having to open up the bag completely. And it does offer a nice amount of space. Currently what I have here is the same 20 ounce water bottle that you've seen in a lot of my other daily bag videos. You can see it's separated, you can reach it, you can also access it from the main compartment. Um, and the laptop isn't stored in the main area as we'll take a look at later. So there's not a huge worry of, you know, regarding spills or anything like that. It also helps maintain sort of a cleaner appearance on the bag. So I'm a little bit torn on that. I think it works well for its intended use case. However, for my preferences, I would still sort of prefer to have the water bottle externally accessible. Moving into the capacity, the bag comes in at about 27 liters, which is a really versatile size in my opinion. I was able to hold all the items that I normally like to carry with me on my day to day or for a day out on a hike or something like that. And I still had some leftover capacity. And I like that even when the bag is a little bit more packed out, it never got too bulky and it still kind of hugged my back nicely, making it great for navigating crowded areas, jumping on a public transit, going on a hike, and also carrying on to most domestic and international airlines. 
Taking a look at the straps and the back pedaling, so far the bag has been surprisingly comfortable to wear. I will say that when I first got the bag and started testing it, I was a little bit worried that these straps were going to be kind of thin and uncomfortable, particularly over a longer period of time, especially when this is loaded out at 27 liters. You know, I, I was a little skeptical, but honestly, after testing this out and wearing it for a long time, I've been very impressed with how great these straps have felt. The EVA foam that's used here, you could tell, is very high quality. And these straps also have a great width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders. And you also have an adjustable and removable sternum strap to help distribute the weight. Moving into the back pedaling, this has also been surprisingly comfortable. My first impression of this is that it wasn't super robust, but the EVA foam that's used here has felt great. I haven't felt any sort of fatigue, even while wearing this for a longer period of time with a lot of weight. One thing that I would have liked to have seen, however, is a little bit more breathability, maybe some mesh, or at least some deeper air channels to provide some extra ventilation or airflow while walking around. While we're on the back paneling, one more thing I wanna call it is that you have a very nice luggage pass-through that's gonna allow you to rest this on a suitcase while traveling to save some weight on your back. Jumping into the organizational options, the bag has a nice variety of pockets all throughout. On the front, you have a pretty simple quick access pocket with a vertically oriented zipper. This is gonna be great so you can swing the bag around and grab whatever you need to from this pocket without taking it all the way off. One thing to call out here is that if you have the straps on the bag, they will block the zipper and make it a little bit more inconvenient to get in. So something to keep in mind. I like also how well protected all of the zippers are on this bag. Even this front one here, it has a good aqua guard to keep your stuff dry. And so opening this up, you have you know just a nice amount of space. It's a pretty simple compartment overall. I like that it has its own sort of volume here. You can see it comes up a decent amount. Currently what I have in here is just my iPad mini as it's something that I might be grabbing a little more regularly during the day. And then on the back of the compartment, you have some larger slip pockets, which are gonna be great for holding items that you need to grab more regularly. So in this one here, I have a Peak Design wallet that I've been testing out. It's been great so far. And then down at the bottom, I have a Field Notes notebook. And then at the top, you have a really awesome quick access pocket. This is one of my favorite type of pockets to have on any bag that I use as it's very easy to reach down and grab whatever you need. Also for going through TSA, this is the perfect type of compartment to toss in a wallet, phone. With the items that I currently have in here, there's still leftover capacity. It's gonna be great for holding some of the larger items that you might need to carry with you. In my case, I currently have my sunglasses with their case. I also have my GoPro. I tossed in a little tin with some band-aids and ointment. And then there's also a lanyard that has a plastic clip, which is gonna be a great spot to attach something like your keys or a multi-tool. The next area that we're gonna be taking a look at is the laptop compartment. And I like that this has a separate laptop area that's not in the main compartment, so it's very easy to reach your device when you need to. And it has a very well padded and suspended laptop sleeve. It's pulled up off the bottom of the ground. This is gonna be able to hold a 15 or 16 inch laptop comfortably. Currently what I have in here is my 13 inch MacBook Pro. You can see there's plenty of leftover space. And so pulling my device out, now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. And this comes up a decent amount, so if you happen to have a thicker device, it should be able to fit in here pretty comfortably. I like that the sleeve is a little bit more rigid and padded. And again, with the fact that it's pulled up off the bottom of the ground, it really feels like my device is gonna be very well protected while I'm running around throughout the day. While we're in this compartment, you also have an additional zippered area here near the top, which is gonna be great for holding some of the tech items that you might have you know, with your laptop, such as chargers. In my case, I have my Apple Magic Mouse in here, and then I also tossed in a portable battery. The last area that we're gonna be taking a look at is the main compartment. As mentioned earlier, you have zippers at the bottom, which you can use to access the lower areas of the main compartment without opening it all the way up. So a really nice idea there. And it's not quite fully clamshell style, as we'll see in a second, but you can open it up pretty wide. The zippers do go all the way down from the top in order to you know kind of get the full range of uh, access that you might want you will likely need to move the straps out of the way and so opening the compartment up you can see that it comes up a decent amount so you have nice visibility into everything that's on the inside the pockets here uh, which are meant to be the rambler pockets are what prevent it from going fully clamshell so you know you can kind of open the bag up and everything won't fall out from the sides which is a nice thing 
it's a good trade-off as far as not being able to open it fully. I still think it might have been nice to be able to maybe sort of unclip these or, or remove it so that you could open the bag up more completely, particularly if you're trying to pack it out for travel. But regardless, it's a really interesting idea and it's nice to have that sort of separation for the Rambler water bottle pockets if you want to use them for that purpose. If not, they kind of just move out of the way so you don't have to worry about them too much and you just have a large kind of bucket of space here that you can stuff with any of the items that you might need for your day-to-day -day or your trips. It's gonna be good for handling bulkier items as well. As you can see, at the top I have my Beat Studio wireless headphones. Then I also have my Evergood Civic Access pouch with a lot of my tech and EDC accessories. I also tossed in the Air Slim pouch. Just because I had the capacity, I wanted to show just how much I could fit in here if needed. I have a full-size Noleskin notebook here down at the bottom. And then I also have my Levitate portable standing desk. Now the compartment a little empty, you can get a better look at the Rambler pocket. So there's sort of these dividers that allow you to store a water bottle without it kind of getting lost with the rest of the items in the compartment. This also faces the outside of the bag again, so you can easily reach up from the bottom and grab what you need. In my case here, I didn't just use it for a water bottle. I also have this Tom Bin Ghost Whale pouch, which is something that I might wanna grab a little bit more quickly. And so this Rambler pocket keeps it separated. So it's nice that you can use it for something besides a water bottle pocket if you like to have some additional separation and organization in the compartment. And with the amount of space that's offered here, I could definitely see myself using this for minimal travel, maybe tossing in a packing cube, a dop kit, an extra pair of shoes, and being able to use it for a longer weekend trip. And then on the back of the compartment, you have some additional organizational options. At the bottom here, you have a zippered pocket that is not mesh, so it's a little bit more hidden. This might be a good spot to store something more sensitive, like some cash, passport, documents, medicines that you don't want as easily visible to the outside world. And then on top of that, you have a mesh zippered compartment. This is actually shared with the tech compartment that we saw earlier where I had my mouse and my battery. You can see there's a zipper here on the back which connects to that compartment so you can access those items from either area which is a nice addition. And then you also have a zippered compartment at the top near the flap. So another great area for preventing smaller items from kind of getting lost down here in this large compartment and to have them easily accessible. In this pocket with the volume that I have I just stored a deck of playing cards and then I also have the little manicure set that I normally like to have with me. So a really nice layout in this main area and throughout the rest of the bag. I'm really impressed with just how many features this has, how useful everything is. And if you're interested in a durable and spacious bag that's gonna work well in pretty much any environment, then this is gonna be a fantastic option to check out. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the Yeti Crossroads backpack over the past couple of weeks. You can currently purchase this on the company site for about $230, which is definitely a bit of an investment. However, the bag is very well built and it comes with a really nice feature set and will compare well to other similar bags in this price range. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag this made me think of is the North Face Surge, which like this one is one of those bags that can work well in the outdoors or for EDC. It has a really nice organizational layout, lots of pockets for everything that you might need to carry with you great laptop protection. It also has one of the most comfortable harness systems that I've tested out. At 30 liters, it does offer maybe a little bit more space than this bag here. It is more of a top loading bag. It doesn't have the same wide opening that this one has. I really like that that one has external water bottle pockets, even though the implementation on this one was really interesting. I still like having those water bottles on the outside, ready to grab. And that bag is also gonna come in at a little bit of a lower price point. It comes in at around $130. I will say it doesn't feel quite as rugged as this bag here, but if you're looking to save a little bit of money and you need a versatile and comfortable bag, that's gonna be a fantastic option to check out. The next bag this made me think of is the Boundary Supply Errant Pack, which is a really versatile EDC bag that can also work well in the outdoors or any sort of adventure environment that you might take it into. It's very solidly built has a nice organizational layout. Boundary, of course, has a really nice ecosystem of modular accessories that allow you to customize the bag to your particular needs. It's a very comfortable bag to wear, has great laptop protection. At 24 liters, it's not gonna have quite the same capacity as this, uh, but it's a really versatile bag that's gonna be able to check off all the boxes for what most people might need. It's also gonna come in at a slightly lower price range, so if you're looking for something that you can take in any environment that you can customize with a variety of accessories, and that's gonna be a fantastic option to consider. 
Another bag this made me think of is the Wandered Provoke, which is another really rugged outdoorsy bag that's gonna be fantastic for carrying a lot of camera gear. That bag offers a ton of weather resistance. It's very comfortable to wear. It is a little bit different in that it's a roll top opening, so it has the ability to expand and give you a little more flexibility with what you're carrying. And you can also open it clamshell style so you can access all of your camera gear. It has a side opening so you could reach in and grab your camera. Good protection for your laptop. It has a little bit of a simpler layout, particularly if you're not using the camera gear. So it's not gonna have all the same sort of pockets for your everyday carry accessories. However, if that's not as important to you and you're really just looking for something that's gonna be very weather resistant, that's gonna keep your gear safe, and it's gonna offer plenty of comfort, and that's gonna be a great option to consider. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Evergood CPL24, which has been one of my favorite all-purpose bags over the past couple of years. At 24 liters of capacity, it can hold an impressive amount of stuff. It's not quite as big as this one here, but it does have that full clamshell style opening that allows you to you know, stuff it with a lot of things. It has one of the best organizational layouts of any bags. It really strikes a good balance with offering a lot of pockets that have their own volume. It has great laptop protection. It's comfortable to wear, very solidly built. Like this bag, it's meant to be a crossover pack that can go into the outdoors while still working well in a city environment. That one has a little bit more of a minimalistic aesthetic. So if you're looking for something like this that has a lot of versatility and you have a little bit of a higher budget and you just want something that's got maybe a little bit more of a minimalistic style, then that's gonna be a fantastic option to take a look at. With that being said, the Yeti Crossroads backpack holds up really well against all those options. And if you're looking for a durable, and versatile pack that can go into any environment that's gonna offer a really great organizational layout and a nice amount of space, and this is gonna be a fantastic option to check out. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you all think of the Yeti Crossroads backpack and how it compares to some of the other great daily bags that we featured on the channel in the past. And if there are any similar options that you think I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank the company again for sending the bag for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one.